I'm a New Yorker. I'm a photographer. I use my camera to capture what's going on in my city. And as a black man, we don't fucking wake up. We all gonna get kettled out here every single day. I feel like it was a long time coming. Between the police brutality, the economic disparity, the wealth gap, um, and just the underlying like um, racial tones going on in America, it was like a boiling pot. And the George Floyd, it exploded everything. It just got more advanced, it didn't go away. I think people, when they hear racism, they think of, you know, someone calling you the N-word. But it's evolved beyond that, like, racism is systematic now. It's in the finances, it's in the education system that I've been in. I've been in New York City Public School. The world woke up. Finally, their eyes are open to what we already knew. In reality, not a lot of people like to hear this, but slavery was never over. It just evolved into an acceptable form. So if I create the conditions in your community where you're impoverished, so you have to do crime to eat, right? It makes the, the narrative very easy. And you just got to take it. And it was like that every time I got stopped and frisked. I got belittled every time. I remember one time I was walking with my boy we're walking towards my house. I hear the hammer from the gun click, right? It's a robbery. So what do I do? Do I run? I turn around, it's a bunch of cops behind me, unannounced with guns drawn. I could have been dead. That's normal policing in America. So when I see the George Floyd thing and people is like, oh, we need to see more and we don't know what happened. I'm like, bro, I experienced that. That could have been me. Now the cell phone is creating accountability. Because before that, you know, you claim that I killed the person. It goes to internal affairs. Internal affairs sweeps it under the rug, and that's that. And business as usual. There's plenty of killers on the force. They know it. The guy who killed George Floyd, he had mad incidents. He had frequent incidents on this thing. There's an incentive to keep black people in the position that they are because someone's benefiting off of it. If no one was benefiting off of it, they would fix it. Crime now ain't nothing in comparison to a crime in New York used to be. There used to be subway slashings, bro. For gang initiation. Bloods used to cut your face, gang initiation, bro. That shit don't happen like that no more. Crime is going up. Cops don't prevent crime. They come after the shit is done. They come, cops come after the crime is done. So you're not really preventing the crime. Our problem is that that form of policing was just to intimidate black people. Because even if you look at New York, which is a, a densely populated area, the white neighborhoods aren't policed as heavily. There isn't a watchtower in a white neighborhood. Black Lives Matter! No justice! No peace! Protest is, is when people get so hurt emotionally, they have no other way for you to let you know but to act out. And if it gets more intense, they're gonna riot. So when you see people act like that, you can't be like, wow, they're bugging out or, or they, they misbehave or they lack discipline. You have to look at it like, what's causing this pain? And when you get past the gaslighting and the manipulation, you notice that there's a system causing this pain. These people are trying to tell you that. America has not addressed the emotional pain of the people that live here, white or black. And that's sad, bro.